Back at Oracle Open World, I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv, and I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and John, we are waiting for the big man, Larry Ellison. <laughs> we're waiting for the volley, the return of serve. Yeah, so we're going to be doing something very meta, as they say. We're going to be tweeting live on the air on the cube of the Larry Ellison keynote. So Larry Ellison expected to come on in 30 minutes. They're going to get through the normal, you know, show horses at Oracle. You know, the normal guys on there that are, you know, ahead of Larry. They're the, the warm-up band, if you will, for Larry. Um, we already had a nice warm-up this morning with Mark Benioff, who was uh, ousted out of Oracle, literally kicked on the curb by Larry Ellison this morning. Last night, he had a tweet storm, flash mob at the St. Regis Hotel. Um, we broke the story on SiliconAngle.com and then picked up by the, the press corps, and uh, he had a huge guerrilla marketing activity at the St. Regis, and uh, Benioff put his best stand, made a big stand at the Regis, and uh, Dave, that's exactly what happened, and now Larry Ellison, who is not going to give up the microphone, as we say, he's going to have the final word over Benioff and everyone else here at Oracle Open Word, which historically, Ellison uh, gets the last word in, and usually his keynotes are very dynamic, very cool, and not as dry as the opening keynote. So um, we're going to expect that. Obviously, we're going to be running off the Wi-Fi and live tweeting. And we just had a great guest on prior to, uh, to Oracle, and that was Pauline Nist of Intel. And she was uh, talking was about the, the, the future, and she talked about the present, and she talked about the past, and her experience at Tandem. Um, and uh, Jack. She, she said the horrible storage stack, and then she said something else that I didn't write down, but it was incredibly insightful, and I uh, have to go back and watch the tape. Optical coming, <laughs> right, to uh, microprocessor design. Um, but, and, and pay attention to the developers was really what one of her big messages was, right? Yeah. That's where and, all the innovation is. And the Xeon, obviously, is a very hot product for them. Uh, you're watching right now the Oracle Open World keynote that's going on right now the final closing keynote for Oracle Open World. This is SiliconAngle.tv's flagship product, The Cube, where we go out to the ground and talk to the smartest people and extract the signal from the noise. We go in-depth coverage, we go to the most important tech events, talk to the smartest people we can find, and provide commentary, opinion, and analysis, and insight into the trends, into the stories of these big events. And Oracle Open World is obviously huge, shutting down the streets of San Francisco. Uh, with, with all these tech geeks in town, doing biz dev, doing business. Oracle is a monster of a company, 800 pound gorilla. Larry Ellison has done an amazing job over the past few years, turning this company into an old database company, into a series of acquisitions, lining up against the competition, IBM, SAP, and all the startups. And uh, Oracle just continues, Dave, to perform. And uh, Larry Ellison, I think, looks at this as a boat race. He lines up the hardware now in that he's got Sun. And uh, that's going to be a, a killer opportunity for him. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, in, in, as you know, John, in the old days of the computer industry, the IT business, hardware and software were together, IBM's mainframe, and then Intel and Microsoft changed that, and now we're seeing it come back together, aren't we? Yeah, and, uh, what, ben, and what Benioff's really afraid of and why he's going crazy is um, Oracle has a software stack now that has IBM looking over their shoulders. And if you look at what Oracle's done, they've literally transformed this old, boring database company into a monster of a machine where IBM literally is looking over their shoulder. Oracle's coming down the tracks, Dave, pretty fast, and um, if they can keep this going, and pound on the analytics and get a mobile story for next year. They're going to have uh, really something, something to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I think undoubtedly Oracle is IBM's biggest competitor. Sam Palmasano said it. We worry about Oracle more than we worry about any other competitor. Uh, we said we don't worry about HP. They don't invest in R&D. This is when Mark Hurd was running the company, and Oracle does, and it's true. They spend over $4 billion a year. And um, we heard Mark Benioff today say that Oracle is essentially, Oracle Open World is all about the next generation mainframe. Um, and he said, that's not what we're about. Um, you've seen this, I'm sure, by now, but for those of you who might not have, uh, too innovative for Oracle Open World, question mark. Uh, Mark Benioff, basically, keynote canceled. By Ellison, by Oracle, Larry kicked me off the keynote, basically is what he said. He moved it across the street, we were there. Um, and his message was good. I mean, you know, it, it was given that John, that he had to basically 
what, eight hours, 12 hours to plan for this? I mean, he was planning on doing a keynote in front of 10,000 people. Next thing you know, he's doing a, you know, an intimate 100 person round table here. I'm sure his team pulled an all-nighter yesterday, um, getting everything ready at the St. Regis, and that was huge for them. Um, it, was like a, it was like a protest rally. It was really fun to watch, fun to be part of, fun to go in there and, and uh, see the line of people around the corner. Uh, Benioff, I mean, he's, punch, he's, he's punching to Larry because, you know, he knows that he's under threat. And uh, obviously the difference in culture is Benioff's a pioneer and Larry's a, not even a fast follower, but they have the muscle and obviously market power to destroy uh, Mark if he wanted to. So interesting fight there amongst egos. Yeah, so um, let's check out what's happening in the, in the market today. Um, we're seeing a rebound from yesterday's sell-off. Uh, Oracle is up nicely. Um, we're waiting for Larry Ellison's Salesforce. Symbol CRM. Salesforce is down. Salesforce is down. Um, Salesforce.com not set for pricing change. Um, so evidently there was a pricing change in the works not ready to happen. So uh, uh, on a big tech day, Salesforce is down. So um, a couple of punches in the stomach for Benioff you know, last night and today. You know. Uh, but good company, you know, innovated, uh, created essentially the software as a service market. Uh, some people would debate that, but I think it's true, and uh, at least as we know it today. And uh, migrating or transforming into a more of a social enterprise player is really what we heard today, isn't it, John? Uh, the social analytics is going to be big, but not big this year. It's going to take some time to develop. Uh, Salesforce knows that, hence the, the marketing strategies to create noise and, and buzz. Um, there's not a lot of people buying social. They're giving chatter away for free, hoping that it gets adoption. Ultimately, not a lot of license revenue coming in off chatter uh, from the, the people we're talking to. But good strategy, seed the market with chatter, get that, those tools out there. Uh, but Salesforce really has done a good job in, in reconstructing their platform. That's the key takeaway from Dreamforce. Why, um, what, what are the adoption barriers, John? What do you think needs to be done before that, uh, that, that vision can become a reality? I was talking to Jim Lundy from uh, Akron and Research, and you know he's been ex Gardner analyst. And really, and he and I both agree. And I pointed out that the app side is key. So, um, the application side, Dave, is really what's holding it back. But what what Salesforce has done with Heroku is establish a platform. Their developer story is probably the most um, important part of their story, and something that they're really not putting a lot of emphasis on, in my opinion. They're putting a little bit more to it in the buzz, trying to play to the crowd, play to the press. Um, I think they got to really drive that home big time. So Oracle CMO is up on stage. Um, Paul Gossingen, uh, he's out here. We're waiting for Ellison. Uh, ETA is what, 3.30 local time? 3.20, about 20 minutes we're gonna see Larry. Um, you know, this is uh, last year what Ellison did is he basically used this platform um, to essentially throw the competition under the bus is what he did. He basically talked about his yacht, uh, that's right, and the, the pride around that yacht, and, uh, and basically took it as an opportunity to put forth the Oracle Sun message and then give a lot of hyped up statistics around how they're faster, better, et cetera, and um, took some pot shots at the competition. One of the things I wrote, John, at the time was uh, with friends like Oracle who needs enemies, and uh, um, you see that in the partner ecosystem here. Um, everybody loves being here because there's a lot of business being done, but at the same time, they're kind of always looking over their shoulder. I mean, look, at Oracle is a machine. They got a lot of business to be done there. They, in all the top accounts, clients deal with Oracle, and they're checking off the checklist against the competition and also with the sales inhibitors. So I don't think there's anything that can't be um, gotten by Oracle in a big way. And in Cluster, Clusterix, for example, is talking about, you know, some little dribs and drabs to them is, uh, or big dribs, uh, big big deals to them is like a rounding error to Oracle. So. Um, that's, a, that's a situation where you, people are going to get a position, but ultimately will be rolled over. John, you didn't have an opportunity to hear the uh, keynote this morning from John Chambers because you were getting ready and elbowing your way into the uh, 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 Salesforce event. Um, but you know, Chambers gave a, a keynote this morning that was you know, okay. Um, but you know, frankly, I think that um, a lot of the discussion that we're hearing uh, is moving past that sort of network centricity that he talks about and uh, certainly gave good nods to the cloud and mobile uh, but you know generally speaking it was um, 
just okay. It was not vintage chambers. What sound think. bites do you think were, are highlights for us to talk about? And let's, let's talk about the Twitter stream. We're going to pump some uh, tweets in the Twitter stream. So what we what we should be looking at is, you know, as, as a pre warm up, and we got the speakers here. No one's really listening to. What can we pump up on Twitter right now? Let's get some sound bites from our guests. Let's review who we talk to, and let's take some of those sound bites and let's put them on the Twitter feed. Well, I think that um, you know. Let me start with with Benioff this morning. Um, I, you know, he started off, he went, he went right for the jugular. He said, Oracle Open World is about the uh, next generation mainframe computer. That's what Benioff said. He said, Oracle Open World is all about the next generation mainframe computer. Um, and he said, in his opinion, that's not the next great thing. And so, what does he mean by that? Um, essentially, Oracle is touting very large systems, integrated hardware and software, you know, very mainframe-like, extremely reliable. Um, Want to run your business on it, you know, the payroll, the accounting, the finances, the HR, uh, very solid. A lot of the transactions are, you know, the world's transactions are running on Oracle. Um, but Benioff was, was talking about uh, getting away from proprietary hardware and software um, and moving to the cloud. So he said, he said, quote, I'm not here to sell more computers. And, um, you know, we know what Salesforce is all about. No <laughs> software, no hardware. Well, they get the SaaS market, but again, the platform is the key to Salesforce. What they've done that has been incredible is transformed. They were cloud before it was cloud. Mark Benioff's got a swagger, smart guy. They've got a platform, and that's what I'm looking at right now. And again, my message to Salesforce is, don't play up to the buzz so much. You got to sell some product. Give away chatter. I think that's a good move. Give away these tools. Seed the market, but really amp up and double down, triple down. Ride the developer community. Get Heroku moving in the right direction, and they are. They're moving into new languages, new frameworks, uh, and the key to Heroku is going to get the automation component down. Look at Puppet. Look at Chef. Look at these companies. Force Ten these kinds of uh, automation of the hardware network convergence level will be key. They do that, they'll win the day. Salesforce can crush it and go big on that horse. Yeah, you were talking about Heroku. You really liked the messaging there, as, as did I. Um, why don't you explain Heroku, John, for the people who not, might not be familiar with it? I mean, Heroku is basically a big power cloud. Think of it like a utility cloud that allows software developers to get up and running with applications. So let's have an example. Let's just say you and I think, hey, you know what, Dave? Let's build an application. And you say, you know, it's some sort of social analytics, cool thing that we can do. And you know, we're working on things like that. But let's just say we have an idea in the garage and we want to build that out. We write some code and then we start pumping it together. We start writing the code and we put it up. We need to put it on some servers. So normally you go to amazon.com, you go right. to these places and you provision you know, web servers, load balancers, do the hardware and all that stuff. With Heroku, I can go to Heroku and basically get all the framework, all the software right there, program and provision the code to cloud really, really fast and allow it to scale. And as the cluster X CTO pointed out, X Isilon guy is, people can be successful doing that. What happens is they become a victim of their success. What Heroku can do is allow that to scale. And that is where Salesforce can bring that app into an ecosystem and a marketplace, a la Salesforce.com. So what Salesforce.com becomes is a distribution platform for those apps, in a way, kind of like the iTunes app store, I, Apple App Store, but for the enterprise specific applications. Um, if they do that properly, the marketplace will define the hot products. They don't have to get this prefabricated these software models down. That's why I'm really not thinking Jive and Yammer will be that successful, because they got old, outdated software models trying to vector into a market that's changing every day. So, having the developer community tied into your platform, you get real market intelligence around what the demand side of the equation is, and you can match supply of uh, uh, feature sets to that demand. So, I mean, that metaphor of the App Store for the enterprise is obviously very powerful. Um, we heard it from customers at Sapphire. Uh, we certainly heard it from customers at Citrix and uh, Citrix Synergy. We really haven't heard, it, heard that from Oracle. We, 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 we tested it at VMworld. Uh, but really, none of those companies are, are really doing it. Heroku, you're saying, is in maybe even the best position to deliver something like that from a platform standpoint with Salesforce. Yeah, I'm getting some tweets here. People are saying, I kind of just tweeted, mobile has no, uh, Oracle has no mobile message here. Um, this guy just sent me a message, check out this app. I'm going to pull it up right now. Where is it? Yeah, so we um, talked a little bit earlier about Oracle's mobile strategy. Uh, Oracle basically has a mobile pavilion here, um, six 
companies participating, very small participation. You know, Jabber, the company that does the earpieces, and Verizon is here, you know, the carrier. Um, not a lot of innovative software. Now, of course, across the street at Java One, there's all kinds of mobile action going on, but it's really disassociated from this core Oracle open world crowd, isn't it? So, let's see, who's up on stage now? Um, this is somebody from Oracle, or? This is still the Infosys uh, segment? Yeah, so, um, Infosys, like uh, Salesforce, um, plunked down a big pile of dough. I guess it's going for a million bucks a pop, the keynote. Um, that's at least the urban legend. <clears throat> and uh, so, pretty profitable show, I'd say, Oracle Open World. Um, <clears throat> so, and this is a good one. <clears throat> this is a good spot to, to be in because it's uh, right before Ellison. So, you know, who, uh, what, what better spot to have? <clears throat> and uh, you certainly wanna go, wouldn't want to go right after him. And you certainly wouldn't want to go Thursday morning at 8 a.m., which is basically what the offer was to Mark Benioff and Salesforce.com that Oracle put forth. And of course, Benioff and company chose to decline that and do their own thing. Um, okay, we're here live, Oracle Open World 2011. We're wrapping up th three days of coverage. I mean, it's just been amazing here. We've had a great audience. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, we're going to hang right here. And um, by the way, I love how Oracle has the uh, subtitles on the videos. I think that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think they've good. done a good job. That was really helpful in uh, in the user experience. Yeah, it would be. I'm not seeing great. it on YouTube though. It's not on YouTube, and you don't really know who's speaking. Mark, so. where'd you get those uh, subtitles from on the on that? Oh, Bright Cove player. Okay, got it. Yeah. So. Um, as I say, we're waiting for Larry Ellison. We're going to be live streaming that. And um, as always, uh, John Furrier and I will be doing uh, commentary. So uh, we are live at theCUBE. This is our flagship telecast of Oracle Open World um, 2011. Uh, theCUBE is the place where we bring in guests, we share knowledge with our community. So thank you very much. I mean, a lot of this is new to you folks out there. Uh, many of you who might not be familiar with Oracle and the Oracle community. Uh, check out siliconangle.com, which is uh, our site, Silicon Angle TV, uh, Services Angle, Wikibon.org, which is where yep. we do the research, sign up, and um, ask questions. Just some we'll news out there, answers. Dave, just some news that we're going to highlight. Justin.tv has, um, <laughs> Justin has two million downloads of Social Cam. Uh, that's big news. Xbox news, where um, Xbox has Allow, have rights for TV shows all over it. AT&T, Verizon, Cisco, Samsung, big players um, are here at the mobile mobile uh, live pavilion. Um, a lot of UCC enterprise related stuff here at Oracle on that mobile. Okay, so we are live here at Open World, and John, um, you know, the prediction is that Larry's going to um, basically slam Benny off in his own way. Not going to mention him directly, but um, do you think there's any chance he's not going to somehow, some way, do that? There's a, I think there's some, there's some definitely slams going on. And one of the things that Mar uh, Mark Hoppus is pointing out to me is that uh, there's some new hashtags that have sprung up on the Twitter feed. Some gorilla and, hashes. Um, uh, next slide is one. And one is O W W, not uh, uh, not O O W, ow, and then Exa Dump. That was uh, I think Ray, did Ray Wang come up with that one? <laughs> Love the Twitter feed. It's looking good right now. A lot of slamming going on. Great commentary coming in off the Twitter feed. Where's his comments yeah. about Fusion? Yeah, no, I was not talking about Fusion. Alex Williams saying, I feel like we're waiting for the next okay. round of a heavyweight fight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Ellison. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Let's Are you ready to rumble? <laughs> you ready to rumble? <laughs> 
Yeah, the suspense is building. People want to see what happens. You, th you think there's any chance he's just going to ignore it? Yeah, yeah. They got to no throw, way. and they got to throw the boring guy up there because, they, you know, Larry's got to be compared. It's like the, just classic warm-up band. Get someone out there who's, uh, you know, going to be like boring, barely, you know, blah 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 blah. Larry comes in, yeah, boom, home run. <laughs> like you said, John, he's going to be rested. He came in Sunday night from his son's wedding. Is that right? Yeah. He was a little tired, and uh, he'll be rested, in good shape, no doubt, well dressed. As always, uh, Larry Ellison, born in New York City, moved to Chicago, grew up in Chicago, um, <laughs> married and divorced four times. <laughs> uh, I, well, I, I don't know what the story is there. Is the YouTube feed lagging, Mark, on versus your feed? What, which feed do you have up there? Yeah, so, um, you know, a lot of what we expected here, John, um, a lot of X Omega uh, uh, marketing, X Analytics is new, uh, Oracle's response to SAP's HANA. I think I'm going to move memory. to the Oracle site for the keynote. So, what's that? I'm going to move to the Oracle site for the keynote. Yeah, okay, so just kind of recapping the, the event here. And, um, you know, a lot of partners here. We saw, I think, a bigger presence from many of the partners. I mean, um, I think I heard somebody from EMC said they hadn't done a keynote here in 15 years. Um, NetApp, big booth, had Billy Bean come in, great marketing. Uh, all the service providers, I mean, this is a huge show for the Accentures, KPMGs, Deloitte's of the world. They do a lot of business with Oracle, um, you know, particularly with the vertical segments of Oracle, the financial services and the healthcare and the like. And um, so big, big show for these guys. It's like their Super Bowl. And um, a lot of activity going on at night, a lot of parties, a lot of suits, many, many CIO events. Um, despite all the f speed and feed focus, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, there are a lot of senior executives here, and you always hear that companies should focus less on speeds and feeds, talk about the business value. Uh, that's not what we've heard from Oracle. It's mostly been a um, bigger, better, faster type of discussion um, with certainly some proof points from customers on business value, but generally speaking, a lot of very um, hardcore specsmanship, brinksmanship, benchmarking, um, very unlike SAP Sapphire, John. At Sapphire, we heard a lot more about business value, enabling new types of applications, enabling mobility, um, certainly some technology, some speeds and feeds around uh, uh, HANA and what the benefits of there are, but um, not nearly as much here. And that's, I think, Sun, as you pointed out, Sun's influence on Oracle. Um, Larry's happy to have hardware as part of his portfolio. It's uh, like a trophy. Okay, so... Um, yeah, this is good information that they're giving this demo, um, but it's you know it's product demo after product demo, and this is exactly what the negative reactions were to the Larry Ellison in, uh, keynote, where he didn't produce the vision. So his opening keynote um, was not really a visionary keynote. It was clearly the sun, machines, and the speeds and feeds. That was all about um, what they wanted to do, and, yeah. and and Larry got slammed for that, and the, the, the teleprompter failed. And you think in Infosys would have taken. Um some learnings from that. But well, what um, I, would, I, would, I would say that, I mean, this is part of the, what they do. I mean, if I'm the organizer, you want to make the star look good. Maybe, at la you know, you want... Yeah, you're saying like, they're happy about it. Like when the Rolling Stones come on stage, Dave, you know, they don't put, you know, better music in front of them. They don't put the who, they don't put the who in front of them, right? Yeah. 